Welcome to the third and final video of this series, this American treasure hunt. This bridge is abandoned. It's been abandoned for the last 65 years. There's no reason to cross this bridge anymore. People used to live here and work here. And I came out here to see if I could find relics of the past. It took some detective work to figure out where people lived and what they left behind and I think I found a place and that was the fun part like the treasure hunt aspect of it just just the research and trying to figure out where did these people live what did they do where did they throw their bottles so today we've got to cross the ice get to the other side we've got to be super careful and we're gonna dig hopefully I find some things well here we are out in the country, here's the old country road. You can see it's been abandoned for 65 years and nobody comes out here anymore, but I did find the bottle dump. It bothered me for a long time. Wow, look at that. That is very ornate. I love that blue air. That is beautiful. Let's keep digging. Do you see that in there? This is one of my favorite things to dig. It's jadeite. And that's a big piece. That's pretty too. What do you call that? Aqua, aqua marine, maybe? I found a bunch of these carbon rods here. I keep all of these. And then underneath of that, I found something. It's like a little salt shaker, a tiny one, I think. Let's look at it in the light. I just found a little relic and I thought that it was a salt shaker, but I changed my mind. It's not a salt shaker. I think it's makeup. Here's why. The reason why I think that it was some kind of like makeup rather than salt is because it's so absolutely tiny. There's some corrosion there from the copper, but, um. Wouldn't salt cause this to corrode right away so they would use something else? I'm not really sure. I don't know if that's salt. That might be makeup. Like you would, that'd be powder or something. Maybe somebody can tell me. I love digging, I'm having a good day today. All of these things are good signs. Here we have a round milk bottle, which is older than a square milk bottle, right? That one's embossed. There's a syrup bottle. I wish that was whole, that would be nice. Here's a cork top, that's a good sign. And then under here, I just found that. Yeah, some really nice china, some really nice blueware. Isn't that gorgeous, look at it. Now that bottle doesn't look very old, but it is actually. I have a catalog from the early 1900s showing all the different styles of bottles, and I bet you I can find this in there. Here's an interesting spot. I just found this little earthenware lid. Somebody dripped some red paint on it. That wouldn't be blood. You wouldn't have blood stay red for 100 years, but uh, I've never seen this before. It's some kind of lid for like a, a jar. So um, another tiny little cork drop so these people had ketchup like you would not believe uh, I don't know what this is it's a pipe it's like a gutter or something some more blueware let's dig oh
A fuse, an old-fashioned fuse, I think. Oh, no, that's a tube. That's an old-fashioned tube for, like, um, a TV, probably, or a radio, probably a radio. There's the bottle dump behind me. It's on the side of a hill. I just hit a patch in the bottle dump that's significantly older than all the other stuff I've been digging. And the reason why I know that is because I'm finding embossed and I'm also finding the letter I. Yeah. Yep, so here it is. This right here is embossed. I wish that it was whole. It has the letter I on the bottom of it. And that means Illinois Glass Company. Illinois Glass Company made a lot of glass. They had companies outside of Illinois, but there's a letter I inside a triangle. Now, Illinois Glass Company merged with Owens Glass Company. I forget the date, but it was really early in the century. So this was before the merger. That's really old. That's an interesting bottle. It says quality, quality glass city bottle works. Um, must not have been too quality because it broke. I love finding stuff like this, and I find this a lot. Back in the old days, you did a whole lot of, you know, working outside, and you would shovel coal, and you would shovel manure, and you had to walk to school through the mud, and so men and women, boys and girls, all wore heavy-duty leather boots. Two great finds here. It's an old iron gear, probably for a car. I don't know, maybe it was one of the early cars. And this is a heat shield. I think it's a heat shield because it's got this this like corrugation right here which increased the surface area it also has um, some type of like insulating material on the back so this was probably some type of heat shield that would protect other sensitive parts of the car from heat I don't do a lot of live digs because it takes a lot of battery and memory but here's one it may be whole is it whole I hope that it is it's not embossed yes no it is embossed it's a cork top it's embossed it has a chunk missing I don't care I'm happy anyway and it says like Riley's or Raleigh's doesn't say anything else I'll have to look that up that's a good bottle I'm really happy with that that's awesome <laughs> somebody's over there in that field shooting sighting in their gun and rifle so I'm just gonna hide behind this tree here and I'm gonna have to wait for them to quit shooting yep all right I'll see you guys now we're later. getting somewhere look at all this blueware that I just dug up it's flat it's thin yeah we can definitely use that to make to make stuff out of um, what do I, I think that's something called Pons, P-O-N-D-S or something. I don't know, why do I think that? It's some kind of like cream or something. And then more jadeite. So, when you look at old pictures, old vintage photographs, the world was so dreary, you know? Like everything was black, everybody wore black, and people wore boots, and having this stuff in the house must have really brightened things up you know and and this right here must have been what you had in a country kitchen i don't know how many years ago today has been a blueware day i'm finding a ton of blueware and i just found my very first bottle that wasn't broken that was a cork top you know cork tops are really significant there's no embossing on it but it's not broken and that's rare There's some bottles down here and they look pretty good. So maybe they're not broken and maybe they're cork tops. Oh, that one's broken. Um, the town, the next town over, just sounded off their tornado siren and I could barely hear it. They test them out every now and then. So I uh, came up with this idea, since we're out here in the country, if the tornado siren goes off, why sit in your house and wait for it to come? to you why not drive out to the country and park on the side of the road and wait to see if you see a tornado then if you see one 
go the other way. And so I tried that. That one is really dug in. I tried that in the summertime and it's really terrifying because you're driving away from a cloud that looks like it could form into a tornado, but the direction that you're driving, cork top, the direction that you're driving, no matter where, you're driving right into another cloud that looks like it could be a tornado. All right, this one's dug deep and it might be whole. So let me turn it off and I'll dig it out. That, I looked that up before, that is a bottle of horseradish, or at least they called it a horseradish bottle. And if you look right here, I'll show you this later, it has a suction cup mark, which meant that the machinery used suction cups to transfer the bottles around. So that, that gives us a date. This is always eerie when you see this. Here's a kid's shoe. And this must be the dad's shoe. Here was almost a good find. Look at that. How does stuff like that get broken? That's insanely thick. The corners are fortified. It's all reinforced and it's broken. Not just broken, but absolutely smashed. This too, old shot glass. And this thing weighs like a half a pound. It, the glass is so ridiculously thick. They really built things to last back then. That's nice. Um, some kind of uh, some kind of cream, and it's got an aluminum top on it, so it's still intact. I'm keeping that. Here's a really nice cork top medicine bottle. It's got graduations in it, so this is a good find. I love these. These are, these are my favorites. And this, <clears throat> I thought that this was an olive jar, and when I when I've looked the shape up in the catalog, which I've got my catalog with me today, it, it looks like it's called homeopathic tube jar for some reason. So, good finds. Here's some neat finds. Here's something that's pretty nice. A little glass stopper that's still intact. I'm gonna keep that. Some old cork tops. It's funny how many ham bones you find. Um, anyone who does this always finds it's funny how many ham bones you find. Here's a cow bone, some type of cream. And this must have been like a stopper. It looks like it went into a bottle that poured maybe syrup or something like that. So, good finds. Nice one, look at that. It's intact. More of that, uh, I don't know, cream, makeup stuff. I'll have to look that up. This is really nice. It's a tiny little bottle. Maybe it's some of that toilet water I was reading about. But that is one tiny little cork top bottle. I like that, that's really nice. Here's a nice embossed one, it says, Heinz Honey and Almond Dream, Portland, Maine, made in USA. I just hit a patch of good stuff here. I found this little tiny, little baby, tiny little bottle. Another little tiny little perfume bottle probably. An unbroken bottle with no embossing. I keep hearing thumping noises and it's really bothering me. I figured out what it is. There's a canal over there and there's a lot of ice and the ice is cracking and shifting and it's making these huge noises. A while back, a little while ago, I said that my goal was to find a medicine bottle, cork top, whole condition, embossed. I found it, except for embossed. <laughs> it's exactly what I was looking for, but it's not embossed. So that's asking a lot, but since I found this, there's others. So I'm just gonna keep right on digging. It's awesome. Yeah. Little medicine bottle. It's nondescript, but it's something for me to look up. Very nice. The red light is flashing. I'm all out of battery and it's getting dark. So I'm gonna get my stuff, take it home, wash it up, do a rundown, and I'll see you there. Thank you. 
I've been standing here for the last hour staring at these bottles. I'm trying to figure out the story. You see, I'm pretty sure that the stuff that I found came from a woman that lived here in the 20s and 30s. But not like that woman. I think because of the few makeup containers that I found, I think it was uh, a very modest, simple woman. And I think the woman was an older woman, possibly a widow, and she was very neat and organized. When something was broken, like this iron here, when something was broken, it was thrown out. So the woman was possibly a church lady or a, a religious person that didn't drink a lot of alcohol. So looking at all these little creams and these little bottles right here, you can see that these are all tiny little portions. Um, maybe they were perfumes, maybe they were antiseptics, like that was an antiseptic. But this is all stuff for just one person. And if you look across the board here, you'll see that there's no evidence of a big family. If you had kids, if you had a ton of kids, then there would be more fruit jars and more pickle jars. There would have been baby bottles. There would have been big jugs of Clorox. And when I look at all these samples right here, I see that these are all just very small portions suitable for a single person household. When I look at this, I don't see a huge family with lots of kids. Absolutely fascinating. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to separate the bottles into three different categories. Stuff that definitely came from the teens, definitely from the 20, and definitely from the 30. My favorite part of this bottle dig was the fact that I did not have to go through and pick out the bottles that said federal law prohibits. Everything here um, looks like it's before prohibition. Okay, so out of everything I dug, these are the things that I can say are definitely from the teens. This right here is an antiseptic. I can't pronounce it. It's embossed. I'm, I'll post a uh, picture of it. And this right here is a small medicine bottle. And the thing about these is that they're both purple. They turn purple in the sun. So that tells me that it's definitely not 30s or 20s. This is most likely in the teens. This right here is the best bottle of the whole dig. And I was looking at the seams and I noticed that the seams did not go all the way up. And I can see that the, the neck has tool marks on it. And so this right here is a mouth blown bottle that was um, blown in a mold and it has some tooling to it. So this right here, even though there's no embossing on it, is an excellent bo bottle. This is the greatest thing. Here we have Lydium E Pinkham's Vegetable Tonic, and this right here has a double like offset seam on it. So another uh, hand uh, blown bottle in a mold, and this right here was medicine for women's complaints. It was mostly al alcohol, like 40% alcohol with some anti-inflammatory herbs, but this was a famous medicine. Up next, these bottles right here are definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, before 1930. They all have the Illinois Glass Company logo on it before the merger, which is an I in a pyramid. And so all of these definitely before 1929. I don't know, are these little medicine bottles or are they just like little shots of alcohol? I'm not really sure because alcohol and medicine uh, crossed over so many times back then. I'm not really sure that that's got to be some kind of antiseptic or maybe it was some kind of perfume. Um, probably a little tiny antiseptic bottle for treating cuts and such. Here is a Heinz Honey and Almond Cream. It sounds like it would taste good, right? It was actually skin cream, actually medicine. I'm not sure exactly what went in this. Um, it looks like it, it, I'm thinking it's more cosmetic than food, um, but there's no telling. Now these are my favorite. These are blue glass. These are definitely before uh, 1930. And I looked it up in the catalog. This, is, this style right here is called a horseradish. Um, it could also have relish in it. And this right here held relish or some type of like small uh, condiment. But these are outstanding because they're blue and they've, they're full of bubbles and they, they just look beautiful.
Up next, we have two medicine bottles. I believe these are medicine bottles. One is before 1929 and one is after 1929. This right here has a logo that indicates that it's an earlier bottle. It also has a cork top. And what's amazing is how crystal clear this glass actually is. When it cleaned up, I was amazed at the clarity. I think it has to do with the density of the glass. So this right here is a screw top, similar bottle. And this right here, according to the label, is post 1929 two beautiful bottles it is so hard to find these without the tops broken off so we were really lucky and here we have the things that are definitely beyond a shadow of a doubt 1930s definitely not 20s because they have logos patent dates and date codes on them and that allowed me to identify them here we have a jar that could have had anything in it it has a patent number on the bottom and so this is what the patent looked like A small graduated medicine bottle, cork top. I thought that by the 1930s, cork tops were um, going out of favor, but according to the catalog, there is plenty of cork tops still in use in the 30s. Small condiment jar, not really sure what it is, but 1930s. I thought that this right here was a ketchup jar. I, I found a bunch of other ke ketchup jars out there, but on second thought, it really looks like a grape juice jar because it's got this top on it right here. I think during the 30s, and this one right here was, according to the date code, this one was made in 1937. By that time, the ketchups had screw tops on them, so I don't think it's a ketchup, I think it's a grape juice. And so this led me to believe that this was a single person household without kids. If you had kids, you would certainly have more fruit juice jars laying around, or at least fruit jars, and I did not find that. This one right here, according to the catalog, is actually a vinegar bottle. So, it looks very ornate. I really like that. I'm going to keep that. Technically speaking, this is supposed to be a candy jar, so I'm not really sure what it had in it. I guess you could put any dry good in it, but technically speaking, this is candy. More medicine. This was some type of salad dressing or some kind of like steak sauce. And uh, lastly, a small mustard jar. Last but not least, these are all the miscellaneous items that I found. These tiny little bottles right here, they must have been little perfume bottles or something. I think this was some kind of powdered makeup, but um, what would go in a jar this small other than perfume. I'm not sure. Here we have some creams. These are like coal creams. And according to the catalog that I read, this was called opal glass. I mean, we, we might call it milk glass, but back in the day, this was opal glass. To find these with tops on them is really rare because the tops usually rust away. Except for this one. This one right here is aluminum, and this company is still in business. It's called Jergens. Jergens Cold Cream. Now, when you bottle dig, and you're digging in a place that had heavy drinkers, you know it, because there'll be beer and wine and every alcoholic beverage you can think of out there all smashed, all the bits. The only evidence of alcohol that I could find was this shot glass, which is amazingly heavy and thick. So this might not be for drinking alcohol. Maybe it was like a shot of medicine or something, but in any case, this is very old. I didn't find any evidence of a husband. Um, is this cologne? I'm not really sure. Maybe, maybe it's shampoo. But out of everything I dug, mostly everything had this feminine theme to it. Two beautiful things right here. I've never seen one of these, but I know exactly what it is. This right here was a stopper to the old-fashioned vinegar jars. Um, vinegar and oil used to be in these little pourable spout jars. And so this right here was like the stopper that fit down in there. Um, amazing, I can't believe that. Speaking of a stopper, I, I didn't find the bottle that this went to. I wish I would have done that because it's hard to find them both together. Here's an old iron. I don't know why, but it's got this hole in it. What went there? I mean, that's gotta be an iron, right? Why would there be a recess in there? And let me tell you, it is, it is heavy. It is ridiculously heavy. And my old favorite, um, I can't believe how well this cleans up. I always think that back in the day, everything was dirty and dark and depressing and drab. But now that I dig, I see 
all types of color that I never envisioned before. And so it's really beautiful to be greeted by this when you're digging. So thank you for joining me on that adventure. I hope you enjoyed that. That was fun. It was fascinating. I honestly believe that these things came from a very brave uh, single woman that might have been a widow who lived uh, during the 30s. Absolutely fascinating to uncover that story. So join me in the future. There's plenty more stories to uncover. There's going to be mudlarking and metal detecting and bottle digging and just endless amounts of exploring. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you more often as the weather improves. Mm -hmm.